First tonight, a breakthrough genealogy testing unlocking decades of secrets. We broke the news at 5 o'clock. The human remains known as 196 Jane found 30 years ago in Van Buren County finally have a name. Target 8 investigator Susan Samples is here now to show us why this discovery may be just the first of many. Susan. Sue, there are dozens of cases. Remains found in West Michigan. No names, no family to claim them. But those websites where you send your DNA to trace your family tree could be the answer. Police call genealogy testing a game changer, the best new investigative tool since fingerprints at the turn of the last century, and DNA in the 80s. It was three decades ago that a hunter came upon skeletal remains off 196, and that is where we begin tonight. 15 to 20 year old women don't just uh, go out by the roadside and die. A cold case since 1988. It's possible, for example, that she was strangled. It's possible that maybe her throat was cut and, and no bones were involved by the knife. Possible that she died of a drug overdose. For 30 years, she's been a sketch, a forensic artist's creation. Not anymore. The secret hidden in the woods off 196, just south of South Haven, is finally revealed. Her name, Maria White Bateman, a 28-year-old woman from Oklahoma City. We did everything we could on those remains through the years. But it was what Michigan State Police did last April that finally gave a name to this face. Working with the nonprofit DNA Doe Project, investigators submitted a femur bone from the remains to test against a database of DNA submitted to genealogy sites by people tracing their roots. After 30 years, it took just five weeks to get a possible match, which police confirmed themselves through further testing and Bateman's friends and family in Oklahoma City. They had filed a missing persons report in 1988. It sounded like she had a lifestyle in which she was living on the street a little bit and somewhat transient. So the fact that we have an individual from Oklahoma City that made it up to Michigan could be explained in that way. State police have not yet determined if Bateman's death was a homicide, but her ID is, of course, a critical step forward and her family's peace of mind priceless. I'm here for my son. In uh, December of 2008, he disappeared. There are so many searching for answers. The Lord given me the strength. Inside the Warren Civic Center in Metro Detroit this week, <laughs> moms like Deborah Stewart. I'm sorry. She went to this MSP ID the missing event to give her DNA, hoping it will help find her son, missing from Detroit since December 2008. He left and he hasn't uh, made contact with any family members or anything. Police will try to determine if Stewart's son is among the more than 300 unidentified remains in Michigan, among the thousands of cases listed in NamUs, a clearinghouse for unclaimed remains and missing people. Ideally, this particular process could almost eliminate all their cases. It, it could solve them all. Kevin Smith is an Indiana State Police Captain and a detective in one of the earliest cases that used genealogy testing to catch a killer. The man who kidnapped and killed eight-year-old April Tensley from Fort Wayne, Indiana in 1988 left behind plenty of DNA. And in the years that followed, he continued to terrorize the community, scrawling a confession on a barn door saying he would kill again and sending threatening notes to children, like this one that started, Hi, honey, I've been watching you. Very unusual to have somebody taunt like this that many years after. Um, it's really only one in my career that's uh, had it happen and it's pretty unusual and everybody wanted to find out who did it. When Smith heard it was genealogy testing that led to the arrest of California's Golden State Killer in 2018, he submitted DNA from the Tinsley murder scene to test against a database. Within a couple months, genealogists had zeroed in on two possible suspects, brothers, and Smith took it from there, ultimately arresting John Miller in 2018 for the murder of April Tinsley. In a matter of months, we go from having absolutely no idea who did this to knowing exactly who did it and having a full confession. It's something. It's a game changer. There's no doubt about it. Michigan State Police investigators who identified Maria White Bateman through genealogy say her case is just the beginning. They've already submitted samples from six other unidentified remains in southwest Michigan. There are at least 25 such cases throughout West Michigan, mysteries waiting to be solved, faces waiting for names, and families for loved ones.
He is my baby. He was the first born. I want to find out if he's, if he's alive. We have an interactive map at woodtv.com showing all of the locations of unidentified remains in West Michigan. As for privacy concerns surrounding the DNA, groups like the ACLU have a lot of them. Police say they're careful to protect the rights of potential suspect relatives found through genealogy sites. And the public database police have been using allows public users to opt out of giving police access to their DNA. But the privacy debate, I'm sure, is far from over, and we're going to hear a lot more about this and we'll be covering and uncovering a lot more in the days to come. I was going to say when you hear that uh, police officials saying that they can solve all of yeah. these cases, right? you'll be busy. Yes. That's amazing. We plan to be busy. Yeah. All right. Yes. Thank you, Susan. Sure. Thanks, Susan.